Hi there, my name is Corp and uh, I'm a full-time artist, but I also like to teach people how to draw with marker pens. Uh, New Urban Era got in touch with me recently and asked me if I could teach all the kids in Tamworth how to draw some characters from the Nutcracker. So I've been doing that all week. Uh, and in today's session, what I'm gonna do is show you how to draw, uh, what character is it? Uh, the Sugar Plum Fairy. I'm gonna show you how to draw the Sugar Plum Fairy uh, really quickly, won't take us very long at all. Um, and all you'll need to join in is a pencil and a Sharpie pen and uh, a piece of paper. So um, yeah, let's get on with it, shall we? There's our paper. Grab your pencil first. We're gonna throw in a few shapes. And uh, as we're drawing, I'll explain a little bit more about the project as well, okay? Uh, but first things first, let's kind of put in some basic shapes with our pencil so that when we come to inking in, we can put everything in the right place. Okay, quite a lot of uh, basic shapes in this one with the pencil. So um, if you want something a little bit simpler, maybe go and have a look at some of the other videos like the Soldier, the Mouse King or Clara. They're much simpler. This one's got a ton of lines in. So first thing we're gonna do is gonna put in a rectangle inside our page about there, something like that. That's gonna be the full width of the character as well. Uh, the character, so the, the main thing with that is leave yourself a decent amount of space at the top because we are gonna be building up the hair over the top there, okay? So leave yourself a big chunk of space at the top. Now, our character is going to be symmetrical, so to help with that, we're gonna put a line all the way down the middle. Also, our character is going to have a head, so we'll put a an oval or a circle. Filling in the top of that rectangle. Make sure you go to either side. We want to keep it nice and consistent. It's what makes these characters work really well together. Okay, let's move ourselves down a bit. Leave a little tiny gap for the neck. And then what we're going to do is put two lines across. This is going to be roughly where the sh shoulders live. So two lines across. Then two lines down. So split that section into, uh, into halves. One line down there, one line down there. And it, so it doesn't really matter too much if you if your shapes are slightly different, if they're more, if they're wider, skinnier, that doesn't matter at all. It just means you're gonna have a slightly different character than, than I do, but that's a good thing though, yeah? Uh, as long as you get all these guidelines in the right place, that's okay. If they're different shapes, doesn't matter too much. Okay, one more line. This time we're gonna go halfway down this box here. This is going to be for where the bottom of the dress is going to live. So I'd suggest about there, and you also wanna start off a little bit wider and finish off a little bit wider because the dress is gonna flare out. Okay, let's carry on doing a little bit of work in this dress. So you remember those boxes that we drew just there? We're gonna join that bottom line there in with this new line that we've just drawn down here. So from there to there, do the same on both sides. Or something similar on both sides. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Let's keep on working down that line that we did all the way across. Let's add a little curve down to, the, to it. Just a small curve, doesn't have to be a massive curve just to give that dress a little bit of shape, a little bit of a round shape to it. Moving down a little bit further, we're just gonna put a line all the way across. This is gonna be for a magic wand that the character's holding behind their back. A line all the way across just there. It's gonna help us with the positioning of the hand and the thumb, things like that. Last little bit for the uh, main part of the character. Down here, capital B. This is for the shoes. About that size, doesn't matter if you go a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. We got that. Okay, let's move up top again. There's a few more bits that we need to add in and then we're finished. Just a few more lines there, Not, nothing too much. Over here, let's go and put in two eyes. Two big circles either side. That's what's going to make this character really unique is the massive eyes. So two big eyes in there. Then let's put the wings in now. Placement of these wings it looks quite complicated, but it's actually quite easy. We're going to take it from this point here. You see what this center point at the bottom of the neck just here, top of the shoulders, that kind of area. What we're going to do is we're going to take a straight line that comes out of the gap 
here. So don't hit the head. Just come out like that. Same on the other side. Don't hit the head. Just come out. And it doesn't matter. These are very similar. They're kind of mirrored at the same angle. doesn't matter if one's a bit lower, one's a bit higher. I've seen people draw it where one's really high, one's really low. Still looks really cool. It gives the character a little bit more shape, uh, a little bit more uh, dynamism, if that's a word. Finish off. Last two lines then with the pencil, and then I promise we can get rid of the pencils. What we're going to do is on the tip of these wings, we're going to drop the line down, and then we're going to curve in and hit this point here where the dress and the rectangle cross over. Okay, so just drop down and curve in. Same on the other side of the watch, drop down, curve in. And you can definitely see look, how one wing is bigger than the other. Doesn't matter. We'll be fine with that. Okay, get rid of your. Uh, pencil because we're now going to go straight in with a marker pen. I love drawing with marker pens. Main reason I like drawing with marker pens is that you can't you can't rub these lines out so you have to make them work. So there, there's a little bit more jeopardy involved but it gets your brain thinking a little bit more. Okay. Are you ready to start then? Everyone's got their pencil lines in. Let me uh, go to the top. I'm going to zoom in, go to the top here. There we go, so you can see everything. We're going to concentrate on the head first. We're going to put some hair in on this character. Now, the first line is a big piece of hair on the fringe. We're going to start about there, where that dot is. We're going to go just, just skim over the top of this circle. So we're going to take a little slice out of this circle. It's going to be a big old teardrop shape on its side. So all the way out here and then all the way back again. So it's going to look like this. All the way back. Uh, sorry, all the way out and all the way back again. Now, those of you that know me and know the Corp Academy will know that we double line everything that we do. So double go over it twice. Double line it, not to make it twice as thick, but to make it twice as wonky. Wonky lines are a lot easier to draw wonky lines look a lot better as well. So let's do that one first, that side first, get that eye, kind of little slice out that eye. Then we're going to do the same thing, start from the same point over on the other side, but just a little bit smaller, try to avoid the eye this time. So just here, look, all the way out, all the way back in again. Again, double lining it as we go along. Right, once you've got those shapes in, we're just going to repeat the same line now. That kind of just jumps off and blends in. I'm going to repeat it uh, and just flip it over each time, making it a little bit smaller each time. Okay, so over on this side, on the small side, right in the middle at the top, we're going to have a little line that kind of just jumps off and then blends into this side, like this. Look, jumping off, blending in. Of course, double line it. Once you've done that, we're going to do the same, but we're going to start on the other side with a slightly smaller line, jumping off, blending in. So just here, look, jump off, blend in, double line. We've got space to put in a few more, so let's keep on doing it. Jump off, blend in, and on the other side, jump off, blend in. See how many times you can do that till you run out of space. There we go. And we've got a nice kind of a really interesting looking hairdo. Now, it's intended to look a little bit like icing because it's a sugar plum fairy. I'm thinking like sugar plum fairy cake. Try and make the top look a little bit like icing. OK, that's good for now. Let's go work a bit further down. We're going to now put the face in on our character. We'll start with the ears. So over here, let's go for a C shape over that side. C shape over that side for the ears, just hitting that circle, that pencil circle that we did. Then we're going to ink out that pencil circle, but just make sure that you go, you don't go through the ears. Round the chin, round the other ear, up into the hair. Let's double line all of that as well. Now we've got the face in, we can just finish off 
uh, a little bit more on the hair okay at the moment this is looking a little bit like a hat because it's just sat at the top what we want to do is just bring it so that it kind of sits around the ears and around the back of the head a little bit more as well so here we go look just a little curve that goes from there into the ear or onto the ear both sides from the hair little curve onto the ear and then another little curve underneath the ear just a small one this time that goes round about there that looks about right just for another little bit of hair awesome let's keep moving forward shall we we're going to uh, go round the eyes this time now the only part of the eye we're not going to draw is that part that is hidden behind the air that the hair so let's go round this big circle go around it twice and the same with this one just don't go around the hair part character is going to have a little bit of sass so we're going to half close the eyes my suggestion is you half close this one and then make this one match if you half close this one first you might have the line a bit too high up and it might get involved in this bit of hair and look a bit messy whereas my feeling is if you half close this one you can get the line just right and then move it across and do the other side as well throw in a couple of pupils decide where you want this character looking i'm going to have it looking directly forward and look how dead those eyes look fantastic let's give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of sparkle let's put some eyelashes on so one at the top like that just a little line and then two either side do the same kind of thing underneath one right at the bottom and then two either side and then for the other eye we'll see that as well look one at the bottom two either side no space at the top just leave that top part we don't have to worry about that last part on here second from last part on here is the mouth third from last part is the, is the mouth we've got mouth nose and ears to do so uh, I'm just recalling all the different bits we've got to do. Let's do the nose, actually. Let's get the nose out of the way, because that's nice and easy. Just a little curve in the middle there, yeah? When you double line that, just double line that inside bit. You want the edges to be flicked off nice and thin. Same with the ears, look. Just a little line up there, a little curve down. little line up, a little curve down for the ears. Nice and easy. Right, now it's definitely the last part to do in the face which is the mouth and we're going to go for like a, a, a happy sausage kind of shape so use the bottom uh, curve of the face to help you draw the bottom part and then curve it round and essentially we just want to put this sausage shape in there once you've got that sausage shape then we can put some teeth in over to you on teeth put whatever teeth you want to put in put sharp teeth in if you want to make it look like a vampire put one tooth in if you want to make it look a little bit rougher on the edges i'm going to go for three teeth uh, six teeth on top six teeth down below starting in the middle here using that symmetry point one two three over that side one two three over that side let's do the same at the bottom one two three one two three so obviously you, you can put in whatever kind of teeth you want you don't have to copy what i'm doing on this bit but if you can't think of what teeth to put in then just don't think about it too much just copy what i'm doing you'll soon get to a point where you have your your favorite sets of teeth the ones that you prefer to draw okay let's stretch this mouth out a little bit just by putting a couple of little wrinkles in so one little wrinkle there one little wrinkle there Awesome, that's stage one done. Let's have a quick look, see how it should be looking. That's where you should be at this point. Let's carry on, shall we? We're going to move down into the body now. So let me zoom in a bit and move the camera down. And let's go out just a little bit. I need to be able to see a little bit of the head, but the whole of the dress. Okay, 
let's go work up in here. We're going to do the neck first. So just up in this bit here, let's go and put two little lines down for the neck. As soon as you've got those two little lines down for the neck, we want to join them up together, but we're going to go the long way around. We're going to go the long way, which is around there, around there, up and back again. Double line all of that. We're going to throw in a little neckline next, so a little half circle from one side of the shoulder to the other side of the shoulder, like that. Underneath that, little bouncy line going all the way across. I like it when I do these bouncy lines, I like to have the side bounces kind of pointing out a little bit. Then, as you get to the middle, have them pointing down. And then, as you get to the other side, have it pointing out again. See if you can do that. Double line that. And let's carry on working down. Now we're going to put some, uh, we're going to make this dress up out of loads of giant petals. It's going to start off with a great big U shape right in the middle, right just there. Then what we're going to do is essentially draw other U shapes going off to the side that are going to underlap that one. Main thing to remember is as you get to the side, you want to get thinner with these U shapes. Okay, so let's go and draw our first one. Big old petal like that. Let's double line it. Make it wonky. And then we're going to draw another one. Same kind of size. We're just going to shift it over a little bit. And it's going to underlap the one we've just drawn. So just about there. Look. Underlap like that. Don't forget to double line that as well. Let's do the same on the other side. Then what we're going to do. Do another two on either side. Keep on working towards this pencil line here, this pencil line here. Just remember, as you get closer to the side, you want these to be thinner and thinner. So I'm going to go for one like that this time. So slightly thinner. And then we'll finish off with one more. It can go just over the pencil line. The pencil line there is just there as a guide, so you know roughly where everything needs to sit. Don't have to follow it exactly. There you go. One more on that side as well. So remember that process. Yeah, starting with a big U shape in the middle, moving it, underlapping it towards the side, and as you're getting towards the side, getting them closer and closer together, skinnier and skinnier petals. It's going to give the illusion of it um, that the petals be the, the the dress being round. So these petals are essentially the same size as this, but you're only seeing a smaller part of it because it's sideways on. Okay. Right, we're going to repeat that process two more times. Let's go and do one more in the middle, and then one more. The last one needs to just hit this bottom curve. Okay, so when you do this next one, just kind of think about the third one hitting the bottom curve. So you want to split that into thirds. If you've gone really small with your petals, maybe you can put more in. If you've gone massive with your petals, maybe you can put less in. It's totally up to you. Okay, let's go for it though. Big U shape first. In the middle there. And then working our way to the side, going slightly smaller each time. So just a reminder then that with this uh, project, we've drawn this. The reason we're doing this, we're doing it for New Urban Era, who have had me teaching in schools online, but teaching in schools all over Tamworth, showing people how to draw nutcracker characters. And the main reason we're doing this so that these guys can have the their artwork projected on the side of Tamworth Castle this Christmas. So I know it's Halloween whilst I'm recording this, but try to keep it Christmassy as you're doing this, yeah? Because these uh, everyone's going to see these at Christmas time. Let's go one more time down the bottom here. Look, this time make sure your your big petal overlaps or just touches that bottom pencil line. That bottom pencil line is our guide. That's the bit we've got to hit. See this shape here? We've got to get all of our remaining petals inside that shape. So just big petal first, 
getting smaller and smaller as you go to the side. So yeah, it's worth putting in your best effort on this because you do want, you know, if everyone's going to see it, you do want everyone to see your best work. But, you know, take a few risks. Try and do something different to everybody else so that yours stands out. That's the uh, aim of the game. There we go. How cool does that look as a dress? Loads of petals. We'll come back to this. We're, we're going to come back right at the end of the session. We're going to come back. We're going to look at all of this artwork and we're going to decide which bits uh, we want to add a little flourish to. So uh, this is where you can add a, a personal touch to it or you can just carry on following what I'm doing. But that's later. That's later. Let's just carry on with our basic uh, basic lines now. Uh, we're going to go all the way across the bottom here with a little bouncy line. Let's keep it nice and simple. Look, Just a bouncy line. All the way across. Still want to double line that. Now with these small small little details, you might not want to double line every single part of it. You might just want to double line certain sections just so your lines look consistent. And to be fair, the only consistent thing about your lines should be how inconsistent they are. So don't get hung up about those smooth lines. Smooth lines are overrated. Keep it wonky. Much easier to draw that way. Okay, main part of the dress sorted. Let's go and work on the shoulders. See these bits across here? These rectangles, these little squares, either side there, the shoulder line. So we'll do one side and then we can quickly whip through the other side. All we're going to do, a little line coming out from there all the way across. Then we're going to go back to that side, but we're going to go back with a big jump, a big uh, D shape. Underneath that, a bouncy line. You see how consistent these things are? It's all D shapes, U shapes, bouncy lines. There's nothing too complicated in here, but it's just a, a mix of all these things really works. Okay, down here, look. Throw a little line in, that's where the arm is sitting. The arm's going to sit there, it's going to come all the way down, it's going to come out the bottom of the dress, behind the bottom of the dress, uh, into holding the wand right down at the bottom there. Okay, let's go and do the other side. So it's that little line out, big D, bouncy line, and an arm. Fabulous. Right, let's have another little look. That's stage two done. Well done for getting this far. Stage two out of four is done, so you're doing well. Let's look back on it. That's where you should be at the moment, so I hope you're doing well with it. Doesn't matter if it doesn't look exactly like mine. That's the whole point. We don't want everybody's looking exactly the same. We want to keep a bit of individuality. As an artist, you want to be doing stuff that nobody else has done. That's the plan, okay? Okay, let's go and uh, tackle these wings next. So I'm going to zoom in again. There's our space for our wings. Okay, now what we're going to do, we're going to start right up here in the neck. We're going to follow that line up, and when we get about halfway up that line, we're going to drop off, we're going to curve around, and we're going to hit the shoulder. Okay, so look. From there, halfway up the line, drop down, curve round, hit the shoulder. Double line it, of course. That's our first line. That's our base. That's the part that all the other feathers are going to grow out from. Now, using these pencil lines as guides, we're going to put individual feathers in. So let's go and put the first one in. It's going to be out there, round and back. You can see how it's kind of fatter at the end and a bit thinner as it joins back into this, this base part, this first part of the wing. And you can see how we're not hitting that pencil line perfectly, we're just using it as a guide. Now same way as we did the dress, we're going to just start up here on the pencil line, jump off and back to the base there. Double line it. 
get back on that pencil line again just here look jump off back to the base let's repeat that keep on repeating that until you get really close to the dress over here and then when you get to a point where you're quite close to the dress that's when you just want to bring that in into the dress just to finish it off like that that final little curve easy yeah let's go try the same kind of thing on the other side so it's from the neck halfway up the line drop off hit the shoulder double line it carry on with that line all the way to the pencil drop off back into the base remember to keep the end of that line fat and where it joins in there a little bit narrower back to that pencil line at the top jump off back to base keep on doing that now back to the pencil line jump off back to base carry on doing that until you get to a point where you're quite close to the dress so this next one i think there we go and then tidy up with this little gap here just a little curve like we're jumping off again but just bring it into the dress and leave it like that that's wings done stage three done stage three of four done so last stage is going to go into the legs and the feet which are quite a lot of fun there's a few interesting little bits in there that to do uh, and then what we'll do right at the end like i say i'll just spend a few minutes personalizing mine and you can do the same with yours just personalize it making it a bit more individual throwing on a bit of color whatever you want to do to it i'll be going through my ideas so feel free to copy me or do your own thing okay let's get into those feet now there we go down at the bottom we've got that capital b shape at the bottom yeah the reason we've got that capital B at the bottom is because we're going to make this uh, sugar plum fairy wear slippers. And uh, why shouldn't they just be like little uh, teddy bear slippers? So we're going to throw in a couple of ears first. So on one of them, I'll do one and then we'll do the other one a bit quicker. Throw in a couple of ears first and then we're going to go around the rest of that shape. Just don't go through the ears, okay? So we're going around the ears. It's the only reason why we put the pencil line in. So it's nice and easy to do that shape. Let's double line it. Little inner ears in there. Some big kawaii style eyes. Let's put a little reflection in there as well, if we can. And then a W for the mouth. Cute. Let's do the same or something similar on the other side. Let's go and put the ears in first. Join the rest of that D shape together. Making sure that we don't go through the ears. Double line it. Inner ears. Kawaii style eyes. And then a W for the mouth. Fab. Legs are going to be nice and easy. We don't have to worry too much about the legs. Let's just bring two lines that go directly up. One there. One there using the gaps between the bear's ears as a little bit of a guide for how fat the legs need to be or how thin the legs need to be awesome stuff that's easy we'll come back to those legs in a second because we're going to put some ribbon around them and a little bow but we're going to concentrate on the hand next hands are something uh, i try to avoid drawing at all costs but i found this really neat way of drawing a hand 
so what we're going to do is see this line that we've got going across here. This is a mad. Uh, this is where the magic wand is going to be held. So our character is just holding this magic wand behind their back. And what we're going to do is going to show you. I'm going to show you how to draw a hand holding that magic wand. So in this area here, straddling over the top of that pencil line, we're going to draw a little Dorito shape. Maybe it's like a guitar plectrum kind of shape. Draw that first. That, believe it or not, is three fingers. Then what we're going to do is take a line up from the side here. Look, go directly up. This is the inside part, the part that's closest to the leg. Go directly up. And then we'll finish off. We're going to throw in a little thumb and then again go directly up the arm. But the thumb is going to sit here, so we're going to use this pencil line as a guide. Look, curl round, add in the thumb, and then directly up. Once you've got that on one side, let's try and do the same on the other side. So we start off with that like guitar plectrum shape. That Dorito shape, a little line going up on the inside, the, the, the side that's closest to the legs. On the outside, using that pencil line as your guide, a little thumb, and then up there. Cool. There's a couple of hands. Let's make these hands look like they're holding something. It's a magic wand that's sitting behind the character. So make sure we go behind the legs with this. But what we're going to do is just thicken out this line. Look. Thicken out this line. Make it go behind the legs. Into the other hand. Out the other side. There's our stick. It's starting to look a little bit more like hands holding a stick, yeah? We kind of get in there, throw a little star on the end here. Double line it, give it your best effort at a star, doesn't matter if it's a little bit wonky. Join it all together. And there we've got our little magic wand for our sugar plum fairy. Next important line to have on here, I think, is a shadow line. So what we're going to do is just go out from there. It's like a capital C on its side. A sphere that kind of goes from behind one bear, across the front, and then behind the other bear. Colour that in. We've got ourselves a little drop shadow to make it look like our character is actually standing on the ground rather than just floating. Although floating wouldn't be a bad thing for this character. I think if we were going to do floating, they would have to do the feet pointing downwards to make it look like it was floating. I'll do that next time. Okay, that is... Oh no, there is one more thing. Let's get back into the feet. Nearly missed this important part out of the feet, right? So watch this. We're going to do a zigzag on the feet. So starting about here, just a little bit below the wand, because we're going to put a bow coming out there as well. Do a little zigzag. It just hits either side like that. Now that's pretty good. If you've got quite skinny legs, that might be enough for you to do some little ribbon going around the legs. But if you've got slightly fatter legs, and what you can do is this next lines, uh, these next lines. Every, every line that you've done in that zigzag, we're just going to repeat it. We're just going to bring it down a little bit. So watch this. Just here, look. Just bring it down a little bit. It's going to go... It's going to stop before you get to the other side of the leg. It's going to stop when you hit a line. Let's do another one just there. Look. And again, just a little tiny bit below. Let's do another one just there. So hopefully that now looks a little bit more like a, a thicker ribbon that's being wrapped around this character's leg. Just trying to add to that kind of ballet, ballerina look. Finish off with a couple of loops right from the top here. A couple of loops like that, but to make those loops look 
like they're a bit more solid, like they're the thicker ribbon, because at the moment that just looks like string. Just flick a little line in between each. It just makes it look a little bit more solid. Reckon you can do the other side? Start at the same point, starting on the outside here, just below the one, zigzag it. One, two, three, four. Once you've done that, do those extra lines underneath each zigzag line to make our zigzag look a little bit more like tape. A little bit more like ribbon. A couple of loops on the side. One, two, with a couple of flicks in there to make it look a bit more solid. Fantastic, now we are finished. That is our finishing point. So really it's over to you now. You don't have to listen to what I'm saying for the, for the next part. This is over to you. Make your artwork a little bit more individual, something that suits your style, something that has your personality all over, all over it. I will talk through, I'm going to start at the top, work my way down. I'll talk through all the different things you can do with it and then you can decide whether you want to copy me, whether you want to do your own thing. But here we go. Let's get at the top. Let's zoom right in and work our way down. So the first thing I want to do at the top is I want to add a little bit more hair. So here and there, I'm just going to flick the pen around to try and add a little bit more volume to this hair. Don't think about it too much, just go and chuck a few little lines in here and there. What about if we do some little little lines like that as well? Just throw them in, see what happens. I also like doing little freckles around the eyes. So let's go and put some freckles in. Maybe you want to knock a tooth out. You could knock a tooth out by colouring in one of the teeth. Like I say, have a little bit of fun with it. Let's move a little bit further down. Now, one of the things I like to do with fabric is add stitches in to make it look more like fabric. So let's go and add a little stitched line around the neck there. Maybe across the top of the sleeves as well. Wherever you think, doesn't matter too much. Maybe a little quote mark here and there as well. Quote marks are just a great way of adding something that looks like a little indentation, but without really drawing any attention to it, just fills in loads of little gaps really nicely. Let's go and work on the wings. Now my suggestion with the wings and with the dress in fact is that we just flick a little line through the centre of each feather of each petal. So just go and flick a little line, just try and follow the curve. Flick a little line through. Again just to give it a little bit more shape. Move your way down. Let's do the same on the dress. We're going to flick a little line through all the main petals, all the big petals. Look. So it's only really those ones in the center that are going to see this. If you've got thinner pens, you could probably do all these little tiny ones as well. These little tiny petals could have little flick lines in them loads you could do. Okay, I think that is about right for me. Now the last thing I would suggest you do on yours is a big signature. Now remember this is potentially going to be projected on the side of uh, on the side of Tamworth Castle. So um, yeah, you want to be nice and big with your signature. So I'm just, <laughs> while I just flick out a few more pieces of uh, scruffy hair, 
go find somewhere where you can draw your signature nice and big massive on the side there so that everybody can see your name so that you can see your name because there's loads of people going to be drawing these same characters you want yours to stand out as much as possible best way of doing that is adding your name on it nice and big awesome stuff so don't forget to head over to the new urban era facebook page website instagram whatever your uh, preference is head over there to find out more details about uh, how to enter your artwork into the competition but um and yeah have another go at some of the other tutorials go and find those other tutorials and have a go at those as well see if you can send off all four characters cool right thank you very much for joining in for this tutorial and um good luck with uh, getting your projections getting your artwork projected on the castle cheers <laughs>